Hello everyone, I am Torior and welcome to my newest Hearts of Iron 4 video. You have been asking me to play Turkey for quite a while now, and I didn't really want to because their focus tree is a bit too big for my taste, but it's finally time to change that. I've tested this a bit and I think I know my way around their focus tree more or less, but not completely so yet. So today we're going to try and reform the Ottoman Empire, and if I, and also you the viewers, enjoy it, I might revisit this and do two rounds next. So let me know if you want me to. But before we begin, a message from a sponsor. This video is brought to you by Conqueror's Blade. Conqueror's Blade is a free-to-play tactical MMO set in an open medieval world. The players become warlords with their own armies, which they can lead in battle as heroes on the battlefield. It's a game I have played before, and there is even a gameplay video of it on my channel. So if you would like to see more of the gameplay and how it works, do have a look at that video. I actually enjoyed it quite a bit, even though I'm not very good. Anyway, season 6 of Conqueror's Blade, the Scourge of Winter has just started. It takes place in the north of the world, and the worst winter it's ever faced. Which means they have added snow to the game. Well, maybe there was snow before, but now you wait through it to face the Desecrators. There's also three new promoted units, Landsknechts, Armager Lancers, and the Owls Rangers. There are new season exclusive rewards for you to unlock, weapon skins, armors, and some more stuff you can get with the Battle Pass. Also players in North America now have their two new dedicated servers. If you would like to learn more about the game and try it out, do watch that video I mentioned and click the link in the description below. If you register an account through that link, you will get a free 7-day premium account. Go on, check it out. Alright, back to Hearts of Iron. Regular difficulty, Iron Man Mode, historical focuses. Oh, let's go. I've done some testing. Right, here we are, and here's why I didn't want to play Turkey. It's not that the focus tree is big, it's that it's slow. We won't be able to do anything until 1938-39, because there's just so much preparation going on here before we can move on to the more interesting stuff down here. We have three main paths that diverge within themselves as well. This is uh, redoing the Ottoman Empire, the middle big one leads to Turan, and this is some sort of a Balkan and Taunt. And there's also a small military one here that we're going to ignore for a very long time. Okay then, let's start with the Monterey Convention, as we have to. And we have quite a lot of internal stuff going on. There's traditionalists versus the Kemalists and also the Kurds. Now I don't really like the Kurds mechanic, because you have to keep the resistance low and the compliance high. Let's switch to local police force, that's what you guys have been telling me to do. Although, that's probably not the best choice here, but we'll see. I might even need to do military governor, uh, because of how much resistance this gets, but I digress. Essentially you need to keep your resistance low and your compliance high and then you can integrate them, but integrating this entire region costs you 800 political power, so it is um, not really worth it. Let's make sure to prioritize garrisons and start our oh, research, electronics, construction and the doctrine. Let's do superior firepower, I like it again. See I used to love superior firepower, then it got nerfed a bit so I moved to mass assault mostly, but I think superior firepower is still superior. Let's do just guns for now. We will do support companies but we can add them later. As for construction, just a lot of civilian factories in the provinces with the most infrastructure and some convoys. We do have an army, but um, there's not much we can do with it. The armies no longer provide resistance help, so it's just gonna sit here, I guess. I know, I know, mountaineers can be useful, but it's a small template. I might always train more later. For now, I'll switch everyone to just regular infantry because I like just using one template because it's easier to manage that way. And I will exercise them. Okay, unpausing and speeding the game up. Our leader is, of course, Ataturk. He has has a lot of wonderful modifiers, but he is old and he will not live long. But we can make the most of it while he still leads us. Uh, okay, uh, the Monterey Convention is complete and we're going aggressive. United Kingdom loans its support. It's, yeah, loans is the appropriate word because they never give it, they only promise it. Yep, Soviet Union opposes us. No compromise, we shall do this thing. Now the British will probably abandon us. Yep, as always, nothing has changed, we must stay the course. And the Soviet it back down, we get extra political power. Wonderful. Now, in order to go down this path here to do the Ottoman Empire, we need to fully integrate the bank. That will give us even more political power. And let us hire a silent workhorse. Political power is going to be crucial to us. We're going to need a lot of it. The Kurdish state is going to be a constant troublemaker. Uh, I think we might need to make an agency and recruit some spies to handle that. Mechanical computing. We're gonna take no military advisors whatsoever. Um, well, for one, because we don't need them yet, but uh, the other part is that we're going to be purging them, unfortunately. The important thing
thing to note here is that if we give the management of the government to the uh, traditionalists, some of the focuses will change and they will give different um, outcomes. So for example, with this, we will get Atatürk's legacy, uh, which will give us a nice bonus. But if we change the government before that, it will give us penalties. Right, we'll get back to that a bit later. This is a very good focus because we'll get a prime minister for free and also switch to free trade, which is, of course, the best trade policy. The bank has been integrated. Now we can hire someone else here. A captain of industry or a financial expert are uh, available right now. And this guy will be available to us later. He's not that good. We can also use him later, but he's not that great. Neither is he. And what well, we could use an elusive gentleman. So I'm not sure. Should we use an elusive gentleman or a financial expert? Because the captain of industry will uh, be removed later on. Um, I guess we'll do the financial expert. New focus. Ratify the six arrows. That gives us a series of very, very powerful decisions. We will want a lot of stability. So let's do improved working conditions and do some upgrades to the agency so that we can have two operatives. Anti-partisan. Oh, we need steel, of course. Let's buy it from uh, the Soviet Union. Our new operative. Mm, he has three nationalities. He's gonna be useful. Let's send him to deal with the unrest immediately. Now there's also state management where we can give control uh, of states more towards the Kemalists or the traditionalists. But in my experience, it's pretty much pointless. Let's not waste political power on it. Let's save up some political power so we can use those decisions right away. Oh, right. Research. Machine tools. Red fire. The six arrows. That's done. Okay, now we need to do all of this down to looking outward. So down here to peace and world, down here to privatize our infrastructure. Before that, we'll need to hold an election. It is tempting to do these first because they give very powerful bonuses, but we need to go down here first because creation of an opposition party that is required for an election will take some time. So we're going to privatize the Andalou agency. Extra stability. As for the six arrows, they change depending on what your government is, but we can do republicanism, which is very good because for only 25 political power we get five stability so yeah definitely republicanism and i'm going to uncheck everything other than republicanism so that i'll get a notification every time i can enact it because it is so good we need to keep doing this uh, for as long as we can because this will go away eventually the others secularism and that deals with state management which is going to be mostly pointless at this point populism it gives political power but it also costs political power to enact i guess i can calculate if it's worth it the bonuses apply after and the flat increase and decrease. So that's going to be 1.9 times 10%, so 0 0.19 political power per day times 60. That's almost 12 political power for the entirety of this decision. And it costs 50 to enact, so no. Uh, this is useful. It gives us extra war support. And we're actually going to do that so that we can go to partial mobilization, but only once. Reformism, similar with political power. And this increases construction speed, but it's also not worth it. Actually, check improved work conditions as well, but we can do it, we'll do it. And let's continue our doctrine research. We've privatized the agency and now we lift the ban on other parties and an opposition will start to form. And sadly, Atatürk's dream will be ruined and we'll go back to the Ottoman Empire, but he won't live to see it. We can also do some actions here in the Kurdish states, but it's also not worth it because if we succeed, cool. If we fail, we'll lose stability, which is way more important than compliance in the area. So no. And I know our stability is super high right now, but it will be going down in the future. So we need to secure it as highly as we can right now. Doing some cryptology. We will be invading Greece, so let's start decrypting. All right, now we can do the nice bonuses here, including an extra research slot. And we can pay off our debt. Republicanism is available again. Let's keep doing it. And stability will go over. This increases base stability. Position movement, cool. See, now stability goes down, but we've invested so much in that we're still at 100%. Oh, also, almost forgot, we can now go to partial mobilization. That will do wonders for our economy. Well, maybe not wonders, but it will boost it. Traditional group mobilizes rural citizens. We can lose stability and gain democracy, or we can gain stability and gain more democracy. Of course, the option that gives us stability. Stability is important. Mechanical computing done. Computing machine. Yes, it is ahead of time, but it is worth it. Conspiracy to commit voter fraud. We can lose stability, and the Kurdish rebels are getting apathy. Now we can gain stability, and the Kurdish rebels also get apathy. And the traditionalists too, but that doesn't matter. Cooperate with the debt council. That's a lot of political power that we can use. Oh, um, new decisions are available. Yeah, let's not do that. This essentially lets you trade political power for factories, which is not worth it, because you'll need that political power for other stuff. We can use that later, but not right now. If I have free political power, I'll get scientists. We could also do anti-democratic raids, because they give us some stability, but it's not that much. As long as we have republicanism, it's not really worth it. So let's do some quick calculation. For 120 days, we get 0.7 weekly stability at the cost of 10% upfront stability. So it's not a lot of 
gain. 0.7 weekly stability basically means 0.1 per day. So that's 12 stability total at the cost of 10. So that's just two stability for 50. Now with Republicanism, we get five stability for 25. So we just need to repeat this one. Traditional group approaches Kurdish organizations for alliance. The corruption could bear fruit in the future. Sure, extra base stability. It's like 120 or more right now, but that's still not enough. See, Ataturk himself gives 30 and we will lose him, sadly. Rally held in support of uh, Mandar's movement. No problem. We have to side with the guy uh, in order to re-establish the Ottoman Empire. So we will have to retire Ataturk, whatever happens. And the Democrat Party, which is comprised of Islamist fundamentalists, I think, or traditionalists. I don't know. Anyway, they are the ones we need to reform the empire. Oh, I don't have the guy anymore. We had an escape artist available. No matter. Fatma Koval. Go do the resistance thingy. How's compliance? 27. Yeah, those Kurdish events do periodically reduce it, so it's not that great. Yeah, okay, now we utilize foreign capital. We will be able to discuss investment possibilities, which is also not worth it, because it costs a lot of political power and we need it. But we also get an extra research slot. Now, can we pay off our debt yet? Almost. First we need to do this, and now with 120 political power, we can click to pay off our debts. It will take a while, but when it's done, we'll no longer have that problem. Before we do it, we could hire Kamil Tolon, who gives us extra political power. So let's start with that, and then we pay off the debt. Because he pretty much offsets the debt anyway, with his political power gain. And political power is the most important thing for us right now. Oh, decision. Republicanism. Keep repeating it. We want to keep our stability at 100%, or over it. Oh, damn it. I shouldn't have trained them up. That was a mistake. We wasted resources. I forgot about the Civil War. And now I just reminded myself about it. Oh, no matter. We didn't lose that much, but we did waste uh, quite a bit of equipment. So yeah, shouldn't have trained them up. You will see why in a moment. Well, on the bright side, we at least got some army experience. Speaking of army experience, we will need a military theorist soon. Utilize foreign capital, done. Now, we could hold our first party election, but it's not the best course of action. We want to delay it as much as possible while also not wasting time. See, this will make us weaker, but is also necessary to be on the path to the Ottoman Empire. And in order to do that, we need to do peace in the world. So we'll do these first. Now, that's just one of the reasons. See, assess our future gives us the legacy of Ataturk, which is daily political power gain plus 0.1 and extra stability, which is wonderful. If we first give power to the traditionalists and then do this focus, the legacy of Ataturk will actually be a debuff because we will be going against his wishes. However, there is a way around this. See, if you get this first and get the legacy of Ataturk that is a positive mode fire, it will stay positive forever. So this is pretty important. Don't do the election until you assess our future. So, Treaty of Sadabad. There is another important thingy with the focus sequence down here, but we'll talk about that later. Ataturk takes ill the fading father decisions. See, essentially we can seek treatment for him and spend political power in order to prolong his life, but it costs a lot of political power and we will also get rid of him because we're holding an election. So um, it's a pity, but we're not going to save his life. We'll just make the most of it. Now, if we retire him, we lose 10 stability. And if he just dies, we also lose 10 stability. And I think if we retire him, he lives a bit longer and we will have a national spirit, I think. So we will retire him right before his time runs out. Let's uncheck the decision. And let's uncheck these as well. We don't want to discuss investment possibilities. It's a waste of political power. Unless you have like 2,000 political power, then yeah, you can get extra factories from it. But we have better things to spend it on. Republic is not available, but what we can do is pay off our debt. Treaty of Sadabad ultimately leads to Iran, Iraq and Afghanistan becoming our puppets, which is highly desirable, of course. Iraq signs, Afghanistan signs, Iran signs, and we get 75 political power from it. Now, in order to assess our future, Ataturk can no longer lead us, apparently. I forgot about this requirement, and if we do uh, the election now, it, it's not the best choice. We want to do it after we do assess our future. So what we need to do is just retire Ataturk, but we can do that in 10 days, because 10 days of focus progress can be stored, and we don't want to retire him until we have to. And it's retirement time. Goodbye, Ataturk. Instead of him, we will get Selal mm, Bayar, and that also unlocks Assess Our Future. So let's do that. Once again, this is very important to do Assess Our Future before holding an election. He is decent. He's not as good as Ataturk, but he is decent. And we still get him as a national spirit. Stability plus 15%. Now, when we get the death of Ataturk, that will be a problem, because we will just lose him. But um, let's not worry about it ahead of time. No decision available. Republicanism. We need to keep doing it. See, our stability went down, but if we keep doing republicanism, uh, it will stay very high. Don't do raids, but do republicanism and uh, work conditions when available. Also, we will lose republicanism uh, once mm, we change our government.
element. So we can make use of that only a limited number of times. After our future is complete, we get the legacy of Ataturk himself and a nice guy. 2.68 per day. Not perfect, but good. Now, Hatai issue. Uh, this will mm, give us uh, territory down here. And some Blood Kupala. I suppose I could give refuge to scientists already. Yeah, sure, let's do that. We'll lose some Blood Kupala, but the gains in research speed are worth it. Hatai issue complete, and France should give it to us. Yay! 120 Blood Kupala. Enough to give refuge to Italian scientists. Once again, we lose some stability, but not a lot, and gain 5% overall research speed. These bonuses do add up, which is why I'm doing computing machine ahead of time all the time. Next up, peace in the world. 15% stability. Sorry, total of 20% stability. Maybe I am overly fixated on it, but stability gives very nice bonuses to pretty much everything, and the republicanism decision is just too good to pass up. Oh, we lost um, the prime minister? Oh, because he was the prime minister. Oh, was it him or was it someone else? Okay, so I was mistaken, because when I was playing a test game, I thought I lost the captain of industry, but apparently I probably just lost the prime minister. I'm not sure we want to hire someone else, though. Those of gentlemen could be nice. Oh, I forgot to keep upgrading my agency. Uh, let's do some more cryptology. We do want to decrypt Greece before we attack them. He's tempting because of the justify war goal thingy, but I think I'm gonna pass on him. Let's get the elusive gentleman. Extra operative. Mobile defense. Oh, can we do republicanism one more time before we do the election? Because it will be gone then. Yes, we can. Wonderful. What are we doing? There is some serious unrest here. And Ataturk dies. I will let this auto expire. Nope, the national spirit has been removed automatically, so there's no point in letting it auto expire. Goodbye, Ataturk. Fortunately, you will not see your ideals trampled. Peace in the world complete. Now we hold our first election. And with that, we will lose access to republicanism. Sadly. But I think we've made the most of it. New operative. No one too special. Ah, eh, whatever. Let's get this guy. He has a monocle. Very spy-like. And you are going to build up a spy network in Greece. Probably should have started with that already. I could do the... the um, what's the word? Well, the mission... Uh, collaboration government. Yeah, that. Speaking of which, I should probably work towards that in Yugoslavia as well. It's not a necessity, but it can be helpful. Unfortunately, we will not keep such a high political power gain all the time. And here's the election day. No more republicanism, sadly. Now, if we do the republicans, that will just continue our current policy, and we could keep Ataturk if we kept sending him for treatment. But if we choose the Democrat Party, it's uh, the Islamic um, traditionalists, and they can let us do the Ottoman Empire again. Now we have Andan Menderes, man of the nation, stability, political power, and uh, political advisor cost. Oh, I guess I should have delayed hiring this guy. Or did we have a discount on him? I guess it doesn't really matter. Oh, I can have him again for the extra political power, but this time I need to pay for him. Huh. Well, I already did get the elusive gentleman, so I probably shouldn't. Yeah, let's not waste political power. Petit though. Still, we got the legacy of Ataturk. Stability 15%, daily political power gain. And if we did assess our future afterwards, see, national spirit legacy of Ataturk would be just minus 5% stability. But we worked around it. Now, the communists will become hostile. And the, and the arrows have changed. We still have populism, but it's useless. We have liberalism, but it's also useless. Jihad gives us a lot of war support, but we don't really need war support right now. Still, we can use it. And fidelity gives us some manpower, but it's not that much. Essentially, this is 10,000 manpower for 75% political power. A bit too expensive. Chinese United Front things happen. As you can see, not much is changing here. We have our resistance and we have our compliance, and they're both hovering around the same value and nothing is changing. Yeah, I'm actually gonna go up to civilian oversight here and down to local autonomy here. This should be better. Death of Ataturk. Oh, uh, wait a minute. We had that already. He dies twice. Time to hire a military theorist. The army experience will be necessary. Also, it's about time we started making military factories, isn't it? Well, I guess I can wait a little bit longer. Engineers. And then start working on maybe getting some support equipment soonish. Yeah, really gonna need those military factories. Let's do the regional elections thing and do not hire any of these. They will go away. Once we're done decrypting Greece, start working on Yugoslavia. Infantry equipment designer. Motorized. We need to start researching the support companies we're gonna need. Guess we could do capture cipher operation. Sure, I guess. Let's try it. You and you. Also, always resume your missions. This should be on by default. I think I can't uh, prepare collaboration governments yet because I'm technically democratic at the moment. You don't need to worry about the management of factions. Just do the right focuses and this will go away on its own. Punish Republicans have been defeated. And now we privatize our infrastructure. Political power gain plus 25%. Temporarily. We've decrypted Greece. Next up, we purge the officers. This is going to start a civil war. But don't worry, we have it handled. See, what we're gonna do is cheat a bit. We're gonna take all our troops, move them to our capital for safekeeping, and create a new template. See, let's go to the division designer, create empty. By the way, someone uh, told me about this in the comments. I used to only modify them a long time ago, so thank you, those people. And we're gonna create an artillery-only template.
template with just one artillery unit. Could also be anti-air, whatever. And we're gonna call it the garbage unit. Not like the unit that takes care of the garbage, that's a very necessary job. No, it's a unit that literally is garbage. So let's save that. And this is why it was a waste of time to exercise our troops. See, I'm going to switch all of them to garbage unit. Why? Well, because when the civil war starts, the troops will be divided between us and the enemy. And what does the enemy do with templates? Nothing. They don't switch over templates. Well, they can create new ones, but they will not switch the units they have. So the garbage unit is what we're going to be fighting in the civil war. Hardly a challenge. Oops, wrong research. I wanted to do this one. We've captured the cipher. Should we keep doing those? I suppose we could try and infiltrate the Greek army since we're going to attack them soon. Yeah, keep the network in Greece going. Oh, right. There might be trouble with these. When I tested the civil war, they did get Istanbul. We'll probably lose the progress on those factories. That is a pity. Also, let's cancel these. We'll need to start doing military ones after the civil war. Actions of Austria. We are gathering up some political power. It will be necessary in a moment. And finally, we're making a lot of it, thanks to the bonuses we have. With the motorized complete, we can start working on the signal companies. Integrated support. Civil war is about to start. Let's go. We fight. That's a lot of war support, isn't it? Our stability went down, which is why I was stacking so much stability. We will keep stacking stability. What do we do now? Well, now we switch to war economy and extensive conscription, which is why we saved up so much political power. And we went army regrouping. No, we will be purging the officers afterwards. Not Ottoman loyalists have been invited to return to active service. Okay, the Ottoman loyalists will happen in a moment. Now, there's nothing we can do right now in terms of focuses that we actually need to do. We could go back and do, for example, expand our armaments. That's going to give us two military factories, because we need to wait for the civil war to be over. Or we could do learning from the Great War, which gives us extra army experience and opens up some doctrine bonuses. I guess this is better. Let's do these two. And see, some of the troops went to the enemy, but there's still the garbage unit. So what we're going to do now is switch them. We're not in a rush. I, I mean, I could do cavalry because it moves faster, but I can also do infantry and they'll just uh, start gaining experience because they are what I'm going to be using. Let's switch them into three armies. Five over here, five over here, ten over here. Field Marshal, some generals, not the Camelist ones, and attack aggressively once you receive some reinforcements. Well, let's go. Civil war in Turkey. Yes. Oh, I also have planes. Let's use them. Ottoman officers offer chance to restore the Sultanate. Yes, of course. We will lose some political power on this though. So what I'm gonna do is wait for this to almost auto expire so that we can get as much political power in the meantime as we can. I'm not sure which is the default option, usually the top one. So if it auto expires, we should get the Sultan anyway. Um, but to make sure to not make a mistake, our glory awaits. We get a uh, Refet Pasha crown a regent. He's not very good because we lose political power, but he gives us stability, which is something. And he's also a general with a brilliant strategy thingy. So I can make him a field marshal and assign him to the army. We also got all the Kemalist officers, very high level generals. Well, let's replace those two level two guys with those level four guys. That's a bit better. Continue. Cypher for Yugoslavia is decrypted. Do Hungary next. Also, we are now non-aligned, so we should be able to do provisional government. Yes, yes we can. Do collaboration government of Greece. Oh, we don't have civilian factories. Okay. Improved competing machine. And now we have new officers. They're not as good, sadly, but an offense expert can help a bit. There we go. I mean, it's not like they can offer any resistance. They are literally the garbage units. See, this is just pure artillery. They have no defense. I mean, I'm not strong either because we didn't get reinforcements yet fully, but they just can't stand against us. Also, uh, why are you not doing your thing? Just take the victory points. Oh, we should have gone with cavalry. They just move faster, which is important here. Learning from the Great War. Now let's do modernizing our army. That will give us doctrine bonuses. That will be useful. Modernize our artillery a bit. And you've done your part. Good. New decisions. What are they? Worker conditions, of course. And war propaganda against Turkey. I could, but my war support is already at 100%. Now, if I'm on an offensive war, I will need more, but uh, work conditions more pressing, I guess. I probably should have done the other thing because I could do the work conditions afterwards. So if you're replaying this as I am, uh, then probably do war propaganda first. Then again, stability is more important. So the war is done. We're at the provisionary state of Anatolia, and we're only at 10 days of progress here, so I could cancel it and go straight to pivot to the past. But the doctrine bonuses sound nice, so let's finish it. It's just 35 days after all. Oh, I forgot to give him skills. That's better. And then now we can exercise them. Also modify the template a bit. 20 with infantry and some support. Let's just do engineers and recon for now. We don't have production to do artillery and anti-air as well. We hardly have production for support equipment, but it'll have to do. Exercise. God damn it. See, I forgot that we're switching to non-aligned. And while in democracy you could have local autonomy, we switched and in defaulted not to use default. No, it switched to no garrison, which is terrible. I can do reconciliation but there's so much resistance now that I think I need to do martial law. Yeah, let's do martial law. We might care about reconciliation a bit later. God damn it. This could lead 
to a civil war. Another one. Come on, come on, get the garrison. This is a nuisance. They should have switched to the default. Oh well. Time to pivot to the past. Yeah, I guess we could switch to the reconciliation policy, uh, which increases the compliance. Hmm, maybe it would reduce resistance. I think we need to get the resistance down first. Martial law should accomplish that easily. Signal company researched. Time for the better guns, I guess. Also, we need to build military factories. That should do it. We don't really need the network in Yugoslavia. You help with resistance too. Also, I'm gonna need more support equipment. Go to 8, and I'm gonna need to purchase some aluminium. Alright, resistance seems to be going down. It's gonna be fine. Still, a major annoyance. Also, it might be time to start preparing our naval invasions, because we're going to be invading Greece. In the meantime, we purchase the Kemalists. Right, let's try switching to reconciliation and see if resistance keeps going down, because this requires much less garrison. It seems to still be going down. Okay, see, all the problems happen because it switched to no garrison, rather than to the default, when the option became unavailable. Let's modernize our tactics. That's 8% division organization, which is significant. Hungary turned fascist, and the Munich Agreement happened. I would ideally want to conquer Hungary, not sure if that will be possible. How are we doing in cryptology? Almost done with Hungary, but we should actually work on Bulgaria too. Reorganize the troops a bit. You will handle the Greek border, cautiously at first. You will do a naval invasion of Athens and the surrounding bits. You, just one guy, will invade Heraklion. You guys will handle the islands here. This should make the invasion of Greece relatively painless. Well, for us. Everyone be aggressive except for the guy on the land front line. And we have plenty of good generals, so that's not gonna be an issue. Also, planes. There is no need to overhaul our training methods. Army logistics specialist. No, no. Regrouping expert. Decrypted Hungary. Working on Bulgaria. And now, restore the divan. House resistance. Going down with reconciliation. Yeah, this should bring our compliance uh, pretty high. And then we can integrate those states, but it costs 8 hundred political power to do so. It might be better to just oppress them. Are we doing those operations? Oh, this is prepared. Then go. Also, resume missions afterwards. The resume mission thing should be the default, shouldn't it? The Russian government in Greece will be quite helpful. Restore the divan. Done. Now we need to rebuild our nation. Well, the civil war was quick and painless, mostly, so this focus is not really necessary, but we have to do it to continue. Regimental combat teams. Resistance is growing now because the agents are gone, but it should be stable enough. I do have to monitor it, though. Rebuilding our nation done. Return of the Sultan. And we can start making better guns. We probably benefit more from having more guns rather than better guns. Still, we do need them. I have a temporary bonus to civilian factory construction, but I need military ones more at the moment. Army planning expert. Army logistics specialist. And our guys have returned from mission. How's the resistance? Still manageable. Do take care of it and repeat the collaboration government once that's possible. That's a very expensive special project. Return of the Sultan complete. Now we attack Greece. Let's have a look at the Sultan. Stability. War support protocol. Advisor cost army chief. Uh, chief. Damn it. I shouldn't have hired these guys. I should have waited until he was in office. Oh well, at least we have high stability. You guys all trained up and ready? It seems so, yes. Let's get our navy ready. Don't have enough civilian factories to trade. Well, that's all because of the operations. This will go away soon. Oh, this is a very expensive operation. And you have the infantry weapons for it. If we don't start the operation soon, well, the effort will be wasted. Excavation. I'm actually going to increase the priority of operations. Mechanized offensive. Right, so I don't think we'll manage to do the operation on time. Oh, well. Anyways, time to attack. Let's get the navy in position. We've decrypted Bulgaria. We press the Austro-Hungarian claim. And we declare war on Greece. But the Romanians should not come in to defend them because they guarantee us as well. Go. Naval invasions launched. Perfect. These guys don't need to progress too far, too quickly. They're mostly here to uh, pull the Greek troops from more important locations. And we've taken their capital. Move quickly. Very quickly. Oh, well, Thessalonica was defended, but not strongly enough. Attack as well. And you too. Yeah, operation will be wasted, won't it? Let's cancel. We're almost done with Greece anyway. Can we take you over? Ah, they surrendered. Okay, the compliance um, also reduced their surrender threshold, so that helped a bit. Greece was annexed. Who's next? I think Bulgaria. We could go after Yugoslavia, but it will be much easier to do once we own Bulgaria. Go here, it's ready to attack. And we start with 30% compliance in Greece, which is going to be helpful. The resistance here is very manageable. I'm going to move everyone to Yugoslavia. We can alter the royal succession laws to agnatic cognatic primogenitor. If Crusader Kings has taught me anything, is that primogenitor is the way to go. Also, usually if there's a little decision like this, it prevents a disaster later on. Apparently, we now extract some aluminium in Greece. Suppose I could change the number 
colors here a bit. Let's add motorized to the mix and include signal companies. Also, do we have artillery from Greece? Yes, we do. So let's add artillery as well and produce a bit of it. How's that? Okay, I won't need that much artillery. And I need to start producing anti-air as well. This should suffice for now. If Bulgaria submits to us, good. If they don't, we'll crush them. Also, exercise a bit. God damn it. <laughs> forgot to activate the Greek cipher when we went to war with them. That was stupid. On the other hand, it was such a quick and easy war that it didn't really make a difference, but I must remember to do it. Who's next? Well, we don't really have anyone to decrypt. I mean, I suppose I could invade Romania. No, we'll do something else with Romania. Let's start decrypting the Germans and the Soviets and the Italians. I'll probably go against one of them at least. Italy joins the Axis. And with this, we get a war goal on Yugoslavia and on Romania. But actually, once we create our own faction, ah, oh, damn it, we'll Bulgaria joins the Axis. Still, if they accept this, they will become our puppet anyways. But I suppose we probably need to be much stronger than they are for this to happen. Let's make sure to deploy some more troops. I don't want to attack Yugoslavia until I have Bulgaria on my side. I could, it's just inefficient. Advanced computing machine. Bulgarian government supports Imro, not my problem, I think. Okay, now we're gonna do align Bulgaria. If I understand correctly, I haven't checked those files uh, exactly, but usually those focuses work like this. If you army is strong enough, they will submit. Sometimes factions are a factor in this. Uh, we'll see. I guess I'll have to deploy these guys ahead of time. Deploy. No, oh, I have not given you perks. Korea fighter, not that good. Infantry expert, good. Uh, improvisation expert. Let's flip this around a bit. Unrest, again? Yeah, it's fine. All interviews with German ultimatum. It is a good time to attack people if we want to. Uh, we're non aligned, so we have to wait a little bit. I could try attacking Saudi Arabia, but in my test game when I did that, they joined the Chinese United Front. And that's problematic for many reasons. So let's not. Hungary on the other hand, I suppose we could justify war goal on Hungary. It would be nice to have Yugoslavia first. We could. Right, how long will that take? 135 days. On the other hand, the allies are busy. Maybe it is a good moment to attack someone else. No, see, Xinjiang is part of the United Front, aren't they? Yes. Afghanistan, Iran and Iraq will be ours regardless. Saudi Arabia, we could get to Saudi Arabia through Iraq, but not right now. Hungary is the only option remaining. I guess I'll do Hungary, preferably before they join the Axis. How's my production? Not that good. I've deployed too many troops. Can I deploy any more of you? Yes, I can. Not that many, but yes. About you? All right, you won't deploy in time. Let's cancel them so that the equipment can be redistributed. Oh, and I forgot to construct stuff. Do I need more military factories or should we go civilian now? Some more military and then civilian again. Come on, threaten Bulgaria for me. Oh, also Air Force. I don't want to fight them. I want them to submit to me. Because they're a member of the Axis. Who Fighting them is a bit of an issue. Bulgaria, what do you do? Do you submit? Wonderful. No longer part of the Axis. We could create a faction with them. The faction will happen on its own once we expand the Sadabad Pact. Now this is important. If you first reclaim the Fallen Empire, then expand the Sadabad Pact, then the Pan-National Association of Ulemas will be automatically bypassed because the focus will be completed and then immediately this condition will be satisfied and a day or two later the other countries will validate the pact and you would get them as puppets. But if this is bypassed, you get nothing. So do not do the Damascus Diktat, do not do Reclaim the Fallen Empire until you expand the Salabat Pact. Oh, also, now we have Bulgaria on our side. We can use this to kill Yugoslavia. Let's prepare. We're gonna do naval invasions once again. You guys will attack on the land. Oh, right, I have Bulgarian troops too. Request forces and distribute forces. I don't need to be calling Bulgaria into the war. You go here and be cautious. I don't need to call them in, as the majority of the fighting will be done through naval invasions. Let's just make sure to use uh, the best units we have for those naval invasions. I'm also going to send a few units here. There isn't a port in the area, so they will be in danger, but I will try to connect the area quickly, thus creating a huge front line against the Yugoslavians. And then I will transport all the troops, except for this uh, few, here to fight them on a larger front. Also, navy, relocate here, patrol this area. Once you're ready, we can attack. Everybody is in position. Next, doctrine. And we can do war propaganda. Do we need to do war propaganda? I don't think so. We'll see in a moment, once we start the offensive war. Preparation complete, activate, wait for the organization to be full, Poland, capitula Poland capitulates, and USSR takes over. Okay, declare war on Yugoslavia. And do not call allies, we don't want Bulgaria in it. Go! The invasions launched. Perfect. Now they should abandon the area more or less, because we do have a land border, they'll be focusing on that. Beautiful. We have landed. Now this will require some micromanagement. All of you guys need to be transported there immediately. Also, 
Land lease from, was that Iran? Wonderful. No, speed is uh, the key. I can't give them enough time to relocate their troops. Also, when I did my test game, this is about uh, the time that Romania decided to join my faction. Oh no, once I completed this focus, that's when. And we have landed. Manual management. And you stay where you are. Relocating. Move quickly. This is very efficient. We questioned the motives of Hungary. Soon there will be no Hungary. You, there. You, there. You, just focus on Belgrade. They didn't have enough time to deploy their troops properly, and I should be able to get some very quick gains. Here, take Ljubljana for me. Oh, damn it. I forgot to do a collaboration mission. That was pretty stupid of me, wasn't it? I knew I was going to tag them. I forgot to do a collaboration mission. Well, at least I did get some bonuses from intelligence. Maybe I can get a collaboration mission going on in Hungary? Although probably not, because we won't have enough time. Let's try it. We'll know what focuses they're doing, and as long as they're not joining the Axis, I should be able to complete that in time. Oh, did some of my troops get killed? No, he just got surrounded, but you're about to take Belgrade too. Oh, we're about to cut them off. Good, do that. This is fairly chaotic, but those rushes always go like this. And you no longer have supply. Let's do that war propaganda. You know what I did, don't you? Yes, yes, again. First Greece, now Yugoslavia. And I'm almost done with the war. <laughs> I forgot to activate the bloody cipher. Okay, should have done that from the start, but I didn't, which was absolutely stupid. Well, a third time's the charm. Let's hope I remember against Hungary. Activated the cipher now. It's gonna toss a bit of a bonus, but it's too little, too late. Now, what we're gonna do is pass a few times and take all states. What's next? Next we do Hungary. Go there aggressively. We do have a war goal against Romania, but Romania is guaranteed by France, so I'm not sure I want to attack them. See, they would want to join my faction. They would want to create a faction with me. So I think I'm going to use them, betray them, and only then kill them. We'll do that in a moment. First I need to finish the focus. Iraq, Iran, and Afghanistan join our faction. And now that we have a faction, Romania wants to join it too. And I will invite them. Of course, we will betray them. Now we can reclaim the fallen empire. We stand together with Romania. I'm gonna be late with the operation again, aren't I? Oh, and I can become spy master. Extra spy. At least until we betray Romania and puppet these guys. But even for a short time, an extra spy can be very useful. And then let's capitulate. And how long until we attack? We're about to attack. Yeah, and the coalition government won't happen here either. <laughs> that I'm so bad at this. Yeah, we could have had 30 here already. Norway joins our eyes. Kurdistan has high resistance, and it also has high compliance now. So it's not all bad. Time for atomic research. License foreign design. You know what? It is theoretically possible for us to almost kill Hungary, just surround Budapest, and sit on it until the very moment that we finish our operation. Of course, we then would need to monitor them to make sure they don't join the Axis in the meantime. So let's try. It probably won't work. We need over... <laughs> we need 60 days to prepare this. Let's see what they're researching next. Joint aluminium mining company. Maybe it is an option. Maybe I can do it. In the preparation. Yeah, of course. Why does it take so bloody long to do this? Yeah, well, new operative. Bulgarian guy. No, Hamza Os... this guy. I do like natural orator. Let's do propaganda in Hungary, because why the hell not? We don't want to delay this too much, because they might join the Axis. So Union attacks Finland. You know what? This is wasting too much time. Let's just attack. Not calling in any allies. Perhaps I will stop them right before they take Budapest. Not sure yet. Call of Paris. France has capitulated. Yeah, right. Let's not waste time. Just take them. Hungary is taken. Now? Well, now it's time for Romania, isn't it? We can't kick them from the faction of this month. I wouldn't want to. Not yet. Oh, by the way, I should probably start integrating Bulgaria soon. They're a member of our faction, but I will benefit more from betraying them, I think. Why? Well, because then I can join Comintern or the Axis. Reclaim the Fallen Empire. And with that, we can do the Pan-National Association of Ulemas. Remember, first this, then this, then this, not the, not the other way around, to gain three puppets. And I think I'm going to wait with killing Romania until we finish this, because then we can use Iraq's, Iran's, and Afghanistan's troops to take over Romania. Who's justifying against me? Soviet Union is justifying against Romania. Not a problem, they'll just give them territory. Decisions? Oh, wonderful, we can get three cores. Bosnia, Herzegovina, and Dalmatia. Which means, with some core territory here. If we go to the... what's that? Compliance map mode. Wait, I should have more. It will take a moment to be in effect. Well, this is our core anyway. Herzegovina is our core as well, and so is Dalmatia. These are the three new cores we got. And they probably have better infrastructure than we have back home. Yes, yes they do. So let's build factories here. Best Arabia given. Once again, it is tempting to conquer Saudi Arabia, Yemen and Oman. However, in my test game, that made them join the Chinese United Front. And that's just no good. Let's send our agents to deal with resistance for now. We can spy on Romania right now because they are our 
subject, sorry, ally. Same thing, really, almost. And we're gonna have to make our decision. Do we kill the Germans with the Soviets or do we kill the Soviets with the Germans? Siding with the Germans seems more appropriate. And yes, I'm gonna need all that political power. We need to annex our puppets and make them cores. We finally have a decent number of factories. Let's get another reset slot. Oh, damn it, I forgot. We have to kick them from the faction. Kick Romania from faction. All right, so Iraq, Iran and Afghanistan are now my puppets. Let's request forces from them. That's gonna be very helpful. Take all those troops, distribute them to our armies and redo their orders. Yes, get ready to kill Romania. Be cautious, maybe balanced. We don't want them joining the Axis before we can kill them. And we can declare war on them immediately because we have a truce, but soon. 2nd of June. I can now modify my templates further. Support anti-air. Okay, I have lots of artillery, lots of everything. I can just build more troops, it seems. Then so we shall. Let's make 12 at a time. Lowest priority. Almost decreased garrison priority for some reason. When the truce is over, we attack. These guys are on their way. Uh, it doesn't really matter if they are not there at the start. And we can now declare war. Call allies because we want Bulgaria to be involved. Okay, go. You two. You're at invite German advisors. Yeah, four months away from joining the Axis. Mm, this will go much smoother once the other forces get here. Don't worry, we'll kill them easily. Ah, betrayal. So crucial for victory. We can do war propaganda. We don't really need war propaganda, but we do have enough political power, so maybe let's do it. And we definitely want to improve worker conditions. So yeah, war propaganda and worker conditions. And once again, we will not be doing the compliance thing, unfortunately. But I guess I've almost made my decision that we're going to be fighting the Soviet Union together with the Germans, which means I should start working on my spy network there. Forward observers. As you can see, we're progressing. It's time for Bulgaria to be annexed. Once we're done with the civilian factories, I guess. Fifth, research slot. Next up, the Damascus Diktat. That will make France give us this. What are you guys doing? Well enough. Let's maybe finish them off. Go aggressive. I do love the Caliph modifier. Have you noticed? Weekly manpower. Plus 1,250. That's over 5,000 manpower per month. And not mobilization, just creation of manpower. Theoretically, it's not a huge amount, but it does add up. Also, I suppose I could go to surface bar requirement later on. Here goes Romania. Take all states. Ottoman Empire grows. Iraq, Iran and Afghanistan will annex normally. Saudi Arabia, Yemen and Oman are a problem. We don't want them to join the Chinese United Front. How crazy that may sound. You guys keep telling me to do local police force rather than civilian oversight. I personally like civilian oversight because compliance grows faster. I guess I can try it. Go home guys. Must visit Turkey sometime. I knew a guy. I knew a guy from here and apparently he would get up in the morning, go swim in the sea and then eat some oranges from his own tree. I'm not sure if that was the truth. I don't know if oranges grow in Turkey, but it was a beautiful tale. After all, why shouldn't they? It's warm enough, I think. And now we sit back, enjoy ourselves and wait for a good moment to strike against the Soviet Union or Germany, but preferably the Soviet Union. Our territories are ours. We could create Syria as a puppet, but we're not going to. Refining our strategies. That's two bonuses for doctrines, which will cover the rest of them. Are we doing on infantry weapons? Very well. Let's maybe add some more guys here. Psychological warfare complete. Collaboration government in the Soviet Union. Once again, this should be the default. One of you told me in the comments to have a look at this and click it to automatically resume missions. Thank you. Actually, I'm gonna switch them around. She's not gonna be on the mission, so I want her in Moscow. That's better. Oh, we're running out of manpower. Seems like I'm making too many troops. Let's deploy the ones we have and maybe not make any more. At least for now. All right, I can make a few more. We detach some troops to exercise them. Refine our strategy so we get the doctrine bonus. And now we can start the next doctrine. Also spend experience. Now it doesn't really matter which we select because all of these are of low value and we want to get them down here eventually. Although I guess we only need the war support from this. But the war goals can be useful later. Could also just delay it and work on our army focuses in the meantime. Cypher for Italy is decrypted. Maybe this time I will remember to use it. Probably not though. I never remember to use the ciphers. Which is very stupid of me. Do I plan to be fighting the Soviets? Let's pause Germany so we can focus on them. Oh, mission started. Good. I really should have gone with service by requirement. I don't have enough manpower. I mean, we'll get some more once we annex our sub suspects. <laughs> subjects. And I make them core. Still, we need more. I suppose I could use colonial templates. Let's see how much manpower our subjects have. 21,000. Not a lot. Nothing. 89,000 and 63,000. Well, it's something. I guess I can make them. All right. Copied some templates. They even have some artillery in them. Let's deploy as many as we can, manpower-wise. Best guns, please. Let's recruit in the Soviet Union. We'll have a Soviet operative available once we get another slot. Do we want to fight Japan? I'm not sure, but I want to have the option. Let's see if we have something more pressing here first. Ah, uh, it'd be useful. We'll do it later. Supporting the East. Okay, Bulgaria only has manpower for three units. Deploy them, cancel the rest, and do the same to the other countries. Oh, including ourselves. Exercise them all. I don't want to exercise expeditionary forces because I don't remember who provides the equipment for them. Some board company upgrades. And the final doctrine. Here we go. Once we go 
not to warm the Soviet Union, I will go to service by requirement, so we will suddenly have enough manpower for everyone. Agent injured? Unfortunate. It also means the operation was a success. A great success, actually. We might try capturing their ciphers later. Supporting the East, now we can get Camel Corps, which are pretty bad, actually. It's like just worse cavalry that gets bonuses in the desert. Should I do rocket artillery? It is tempting. Maybe later. I'm making too much motorized equipment. Not enough anti-air and support. Germany attack the Soviet Union. It's almost time for us to attack the Soviet Union. Just make sure our troops are trained up. Also, let's let them exhaust each other a bit. The operative is unavailable. Right, she can take his place. We'll rebuild the network afterwards. Boosting our forces. We're taking our time. There's no need to rush. Or rather, there's no need to rush too much. That's even too many upgrades. Let's not do anything here. Now, I could attack the Soviet Union as my own faction, or I could dismantle it and join the Axis. I could also attack Saudi Arabia, having dismantled my faction, but then there's a chance of getting into a war with China, and we don't want that. So let's leave them alone, for now. Camels are done. Let's do the war sport thing, and then the war go on Japan, because right after the Soviet Union we might want to invade Japan. I think I need to dismantle my faction. If we join the Axis, we will have more options, and we'll be able to attack Japan without having to attack the Axis at the same time. Let's dismantle the faction. We don't need it anymore, they are our puppets. And here's rocket artillery, which is very, very tempting. I'm gonna research it just so I can see what would happen if I exchanged the recon companies for this. Alright, I dismantled the faction, and the expeditionary forces were sent back, which is actually fine. I just re-request them. But we'll have to reorganize our armies. That's also not a problem, really. But uh, anti-air. Japan attacks the Philippines, which means Japan is about to be at war with the Allies, as soon as it demands French Indochina as well. Shogun all complete. We've done all the doctrines. Support weapons fall. I am pretty much ready to fight the Soviets, I guess. Japan demands French Indochina and gets killed soon. I will need another field marshal. Oh, he didn't gain any levels. That's an disappointing. I guess I'll just use the one I have. He is a logistics wizard, after all. Okay, I guess I don't need to exercise them that much. Should I annex my puppets before we fight? That might be the right thing to do. Let's send Bulgaria our stuff. Stalin, please. All the convoys. And guns. All the guns. Well, not all the guns, but some support equipment and our current... Oh, and some motorized. We do have that. We will get all of it back. That should do it. Then we can send all of this to Iran, Iraq and Afghanistan, respectively. And annex them too. Convoys are being sent out. War goal against Japan. I guess I could reset some marines so that the bonus will apply uh, to newer units. Although, do I really want to use marines? No, I don't. Let's invest in construction instead, and in concentrated industry, and start producing better guns. Hmm, their independence is not dropping as quickly as I would like it to. Do you not... Oh, here's the land lease. Good. Let's modify it. Yeah, right. Sending more than these. Let's research the landing crafts and we'll get this from the Japan focus. I have built up Bulgaria as much as I can, pretty much. Let's move to other countries. Who's next? Iran, because the biggest. Let's do infrastructure up to level, say, five everywhere. That should also apply to us, shouldn't it? We do need to get supplies there, after all. How are we doing with the cords? We could integrate them, but that would cost us political power that we can spend elsewhere. So let's not. Let's observe Germany killing the Soviet Union in the meantime. Yeah, we'll need to join that. I could just attack Italy. No, I think we'll benefit more from taking out the Soviet also, my guys are already on the job. Conversion government worked, but I do need to rebuild my network. So we can do one more. Okay, we've done towed rocket artillery. Now I want to see what happens if I exchange recon company for support rocket artillery. Hit points and organization would go down. Soft attack would go up, but not by that much. Just by 20. No difference in breakthrough almost. It's not worth it, is it? Let's just keep it as is. Alright, we finished our main part of the focus tree. Now we could get some more military factories, but there's just two. Or... We could get some research bonuses here. I guess this could be helpful. Let's embrace military tradition. Although, two, three hundred percent bonuses for support technology. Okay, this gives us a bonus for engineers, recon, and any other support. And this gives us a bonus for two supports. Let's do these two. Although, before this actually finishes, I'm gonna need to start researching certain companies. So the bonuses are not wasted. Come on, I need to annex them. And now we do utilizing our terrain for engineers. That'll give us very advanced support companies. And soon we'll annex Bulgaria. Just a moment longer and now we can do it. Sure, let's do it. Bulgaria is ours and I should get all the equipment back and send it to Iran. Let's start with just a bit of land lease and we'll add more once we reduce their independence a bit. We won't want any of this equipment we send them to be wasted. So yeah, they'll get more once they are an integrated puppet. And we got some Bulgarian forces. They shall be changed to our regular template and exercise. Also, can I now make this my core territory? Hmm, I thought I would be able to. Ah, I need this bit too. 
Well, soon. I guess we have that much political power that I could actually integrate the Kurds. Now, we don't want to use any of these because it will eat up our bonus too quickly. We want to do signal first and then engineers and recon because they have their individual bonuses, or rather they will in a moment. But if you look here, this is a 200% bonus for support technology and 150% bonus for reconnaissance company. If I were to do the reconnaissance company now, it would eat up the 200% bonus and completely waste the 150% bonus. So we want this 200 to go on this one and these two will get their respective bonuses. Utilizing our terrain is complete, that's one extra bonus. And with this done, we can commence the events first, signal company, and then the other two. See, it is a bit ahead of time, but with the bonus it will happen quickly. Priority of arms, with that we'll do artillery. Iran, lower independence and modify the land lease. Improved and the land lease a bit. Let's just keep doing these, we have nothing better to do. We want to wait for the Soviet Union to be a bit more exhausted before we join the fight. So also overhaul the training methods because we can. Iceland got attacked. Next delivery, six days. Oh no, Soviet Union annexed Tanutuva. Hmm, if China gets annexed soon, maybe I can attack Saudi Arabia. I didn't realize the Japan war goal would expire. I won't have enough time to use it. That's a pity. Border conflict? What the hell? They ever mentioned I hate border conflict mechanics. No, oh, they're well equipped. Just get there quickly. Seriously, this is so stupid. So bloody stupid. Hey, border conflict. Yay. One unit got defeated. We lost all that territory. You at least notified me. Maybe it did. Maybe I missed it. Anyway, did I mention this is stupid? I'm gonna need to kill them. Of Kiev, might be about time to attack the Soviets. I would like to annex Iran and Iraq before that happens. Possibly Afghanistan too. Oh, we can annex Iran. How did I miss that? Okay, let us do so. Can I make them mark core territories? I can not. Maybe because they did what they did. Bastards. But really, don't you think it's stupid that they can take my land without war? Or me agreeing to such a thing? Or me being able to declare war over this? I really hate this mechanic. Really. Time to lend these to Iraq. Had to modify the land lease for Iraq a bit. Fall of Rome. Interesting. Perhaps we should side against the Axis. The United States are especially aggressive this time. Good thing we haven't attacked anyone yet. Oh, by the way, um, mission has commenced. So since the mission has commenced, move to Germany. I mean, the United States might get rebelled soon. If they don't, maybe it's time to fight Germany instead. Lower Iraq's independence. Modify land lease. There should be just a give everything button. Yeah, I think I need to switch sides in the conflict I haven't taken sides in yet. With the Allies pushing so strongly, and if Italy capitulates, yeah, that might be the right choice. I think Italy's about to capitulate. They definitely need a change of plans. Good thing we haven't attacked too early. It's always wise to wait it out a bit and let them fight each other. Germany is still doing good, but if Italy falls and they're fighting the Allies in the south, it will not be pretty for them. Perhaps we should still attack Italy, while well, they haven't capitulated, so that we can utilize our war goal. With that, I will need to distribute my troops properly. Switch them all to my regular template, and I suppose I might need to disband some. Oh, right, I was using some Iraq's manpower and Afghanistan's. I think it's finally time to get involved. We could turn against the Germany, or we could go for the Soviet Union, but we're already prepared for the Soviet Union, so I guess it's only proper to crush them. Their collaboration will be full and we'll defeat them easily. Now, how are we doing on the annexation? Almost there. All right, we annex Iraq, we get the equipment back, and then we attack. Do I have a war goal on you? I do not. Let us get one. Maybe something far away. Just so we know that the Germans don't take it in the meantime. And some free dockouts. Oh, also the troops. Uh, do I need that many? Probably not. One full army group will be more than enough, and they still don't have enough equipment. They will get it soon once we annex Iraq, because we're sending it all to Iraq. Also, manpower is not that great, is it? No matter. We'll go to service by requirement, and it will be okay. Stop the exercise, and let's make an army group. This 27-unit army will just uh, stay behind. Might even disband them, we'll see. As you can see, the Germans have overtaken our border with the Soviet Union, so we'll only have a connection down here, which is pretty good, because they're not very strong down here, usually. And this army can, I don't know, guard us against naval invasions if they happen. I'm gonna do three armies here, and two here. This is a larger area, but um, also it's not likely to be as defended. Aggressive at first, then we'll switch to balanced or cautious. And the annexation of Iraq must happen first as well, because we need that equipment that we've sent them. And we can annex Iraq. Let's do it. Perfect. Also got some more troops. I guess I don't really need them. I could use the manpower they represent. Also, they're a different build. I need to test out infantry plus support against infantry plus artillery plus support. It would be more expensive to use it that way, but it might be profitable. Anyway, I'm gonna disband these units so that we can use the manpower for reinforcements. We only have Afghanistan left. We would like to annex them as well, but I can't really afford to send them equipment. Unless we only send them convoys and make some dockyards to produce them. Yeah, I think that is what we're gonna do. Are we doing equipment? Wonderfully. Now we do have large stockpiles of everything once we got it back from Iraq. You can have all my convoys. 500 per month will do. Afghanistan, you're the next to be annexed. And since we do have that political power reserve, maybe I should deal with the Kurds once and for all by integrating them into our society. It is expensive, but 
What else am I gonna spend it on? I'm still angry about this border war. All right, let's integrate the Kurds. We want to restore order in the Soviet Union. Exactly. Move a bit faster, please. I am working on improving the infrastructure in the area. I guess I could improve it more. No, that's fine, I think. Perhaps aggressive is too much. Go balanced. All right, the agents. Oh, how oh, did we get booted out of Moscow? Oh no, right, I moved her to Germany. No, 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 keep doing the Soviet Union. Actually, keep doing both. I might join the Axis in a moment. We'll see. Yeah, change of plans. Focus on the Soviet Union forever. I'll probably join the Axis temporarily. And you get out of Moscow, because it might be taken soon. At least my cipher against the Soviet Union is almost decrypted. Let's remember to use it this time. All goes ready. Go, go, go. Call allies. Which means Afghanistan. We should do fine against them. Really fine. Are you guys not attacking? All right, and I'm being invited into the Axis. I will join, but first I will acquire military access. It is always good to have that in case you want to use it. Here comes military access. And yeah, we will join the Axis. Temporarily. They're just going against the Vichy Front. Not a problem. Why are you not attacking? You guys really need to be more aggressive. The last two armies. Oh, that's because most of you are not here. That's fine. They'll get there in time. And we're already advancing. Actually, since we seem to be overwhelmingly powerful, let's just make everyone aggressive after all. I thought I called Afghanistan. Let's make sure to do that. The version of Paris, that was quick. The Soviet Union will not take that much to capitulate since we have cooperation governments there for 200%. Power overwhelming. Afghanistan's independence lowered. Convoys wonderful for decreasing independence. Not sure why the Germans want to attack from my territory. Oh, damn it. They're going to garrison the British Raj's border. I'm not going to war with the Allies. Probably should not have joined the Axis. No matter. It's going to be fine. Convoys from the US. Good. And I need some political power so that I can go to service by requirement because I don't have enough manpower. So it's cipher decrypted. This time let's use it. Oh, and joining the Axis actually removed my cipher progress on Germany and my completed cipher on Italy. But we can become spy master. So that's something. Oh, that wasted my political power. Should have waited. Need manpower more than I need the spies. What's my participation? 6%. Decent. If you take into account the short time we have been in this war. Lovely shade of green. Better artillery. I could remove disorganized armed forces with this, but do I need to. Division speed reduction, that's all. And some war support reduction, but war support is very high anyway. So I don't need to waste my time doing this. How about I just don't do anything for a while because I want the political power. And these, good. I don't really need the convoys for myself, which is why I'm giving them to Afghanistan. New operative. How about a German? That's the propaganda. That should further reduce their surrender threshold. Wait a minute, their surrender threshold seems to be unaffected by the collaboration thingy, which is strange. How's the logistics? Wonderful. Service by requirement. And let's do the repeating focus of construction and repair. This is going to be necessary for the infrastructure. I don't need an expeditionary force. These guys are starting to encounter some resistance. I think I could still keep them on aggressive, but I'll go down to balanced. Don't want to get unnecessary losses. Growing steadily. And at 20%. 20% is enough to get most of the Soviet Union. We just need to play around with parting them. Hm, this is really problematic. Go cautious. Well, not you. You go forth. Probably reorganize a bit. Don't need that many troops here. You guys will go to Crimea very quickly. Better engineers. They left Crimea undefended. Good for me. And we're running out of research to do. Then all the doctrines, most of the artillery stuff, all the upgrades of our support companies. Well, all that's left is these. Troops arriving in Crimea. That's almost taken already. Just go here manually. Frontline orders always get messed up around here. Tragedy befalls the Ottoman royal family. Okay, that might be what we needed to change the succession laws for. We can get Sultana, which is a girl. Stability 15%, war support 10%, compliance gain 0.01. Political advisor cost... Um, she's better than Ataturk. Or at least compliance. Parable. Or you can just not. <laughs> of course we're gonna get her. All right, let's have a look. She is great. Sultana and Khalifa. Wonderful. The compliance gain thing is gonna be quite useful too. I could do war propaganda, but we don't need to. Oh, and we will restore the Vilayet of Baghdad. That's gonna give me extra cores on Iraq. Cool. Extra cores means extra manpower. That's not a huge amount, but nonetheless significant. And Afghanistan is slowly getting integrated thanks to our convoys. And the wonderful thing about that is we're gonna get all those convoys back. Now you attack this way. 24% participation, which is sufficient. And Germany is getting defeated, so right after we've dealt with the Soviet Union, it'll be time to change sides. Alright, I don't need you guys attacking from German territory. We've secured Crimea, you can leave. Actually, we've connected here, so what I'm gonna do is reorganize my guys a bit. It might cost us some progress in the short term, but in the long term it should work out great. Everyone be balanced and do a field marshal level order on the entirety of... Oh no, it's not connected yet. So I messed up. But it's about to be. Come on. Because I just messed up my orders. Alright, that's better. Now, field Marshal level order.
other on all of this. The organization might cause me to be pushed back a little bit. Artillery maxed out. You know, they seem to be in trouble. Should just go aggressive. No, no, that wastes too much manpower. Balanced was fine. We're not in a rush. Agent captured. Well, we have a lot of agents. We can rescue him quite easily. There's not moving. Is that not enough infrastructure? That's silly. I had to go back to aggressive once again because they were just not moving. Yeah, there isn't a lot of infrastructure, is there? We're just gonna build some more. Switch construction and repair to construction engineering. And the last upgrade for entire air. I had to keep flipping between aggressive and balanced, which is probably not the best. Our progress has been largely halted, which is a pity. Germany is not doing their part. Maybe because they're in trouble here. Yeah, if I am to defeat the Soviet Union being the, you know, main participant of the war, I can't waste too much manpower. I should probably go to total mobilization. Recruitable population will not be a problem. And we can always do women in the workforce if we run out of manpower. Oh, the Germans might be about to take Leningrad. I may need to help them a bit. You guys, go north and help. Yeah, Germany definitely needs to be betrayed soon. I'll research some rocket artillery, maybe I'll add some to my units later. Leningrad is undefended, which is pretty silly. I need to annex Afghanistan, because I need those convoys back to trade with the United States. I'm gonna have to send them other stuff. You can have my regular equipment. Go. Cool. After the next land lease delivery, I should be able to annex them. Full of Leningrad. We did that. 33% participation. Might want to dispatch one army to take Moscow. Or half of you guys, that will work too. Or do a manual attack, it might succeed. Some manual management, pity that the collaboration government thing seems to not be working. Oh, nice and recruitment. Full of Cairo, hm, whatever. Oh, Italy is done for. Yeah, definitely need to go against them soon. <laughs> are you guys gonna take Moscow? No, you guys are gonna take Moscow. Go, attack with all your might. And you might just get it. Here we go. Moscow is mine. Is that enough? It is not enough. Getting quite deep here. There are some victory points in the area. Might be helpful. Really need to annex Iraq because I'm out of equipment. Oh, god damn it. I forgot I need 300 political power. That was pretty dumb of me. Let's cancel the land lease because we've already sent them enough. 85% was capitulation. Not enough. Perhaps if I do some propaganda that will help? Probably not. I did send my guys to capture the cipher, so this should be done in a couple of days. And then we can push a bit stronger. Crush them. Germany's influence me. Huh. I'm gonna have to kill them for this. 93%. Agent captured, which is unfortunate. Hmm. The cipher thing takes too much time. And finally, I can annex Afghanistan. And I guess disband these troops. I don't need them. Although I do have the equipment. Let's just switch them to my regular units. I might have a use for them. So now we should have lots of equipment that we can send to reinforce our guys. Hmm. Actually, have less than I hoped for. At least now I can buy steel from the US. 97. Oh, is Germany pushing back? Intriguing. I mean, if we join the fray, they won't be able to defend themselves. Still, the Netherlands did a great job here. All the Americans, most likely. Anyway, so it's almost time for us to get involved. I wish there were more endgame technologies. This is 1943 and I've pretty much researched everything I wanted. And Germany decided to take stuff. Oh, Southern Bessarabia. I think I need this for a decision, so let's take this directly. Also, make sure to take some more territory directly, but I guess we can do that later. We want to puppet the Soviet Union. This is vital, because then we'll be able to take more stuff. Although, if this is pretty cheap for us already, maybe I don't need to puppet them. But if I do, we'll get a lot more manpower, so let's. Let's pop up the Soviet Union. And I guess the next Mongolia. And that's our turn one. Germany takes a bunch more stuff. Not an issue. And we take our Soviet puppet. Make sure to separate it from the Germans completely so they can't take stuff inside it. All the provinces that border the Germans and all the coasts. This way they should not be able to take territory. Or at least their AI won't allow them to. Okay, that's good. That's given to our Soviet puppet. We need to take some course for ourselves just to make sure our compliance doesn't go to waste. Here and here. No, whatever. Doesn't really matter. And the rest... I suppose I can give to my puppet. Too much for one round. Ah, see, I wasn't checking if I can actually accept this, and I can't because I've taken too much. Which means I have to redo this whole thing. Pass, and only now do it. Now I will surely have enough points. This should suffice. Some territory for ourselves too. Not too much, just a bit. And the rest for the Soviets. That's as much as we can afford this round. And now the Germans should not be able to take anything if we pass. So I'm gonna give all of this to the Soviet Union, so that when I annex them, I get all their manpower. And compliance there should go up immediately, um, because of the collaboration governments I did. I just can't uh, let the collaboration government form yet. I probably won't let it form at all. The high compliance has other benefits. And done! As you can see, we got most of it, even though our war score was not the top one. Germany did get a lot, and we will need to betray them soon. Russia is now my puppet, and it has 3 million manpower that I'm going to absorb. Wait a minute, I had a collaboration government. This should be much higher. Something went wrong here. I should have 100% collaboration in the territories that used to belong to the Soviet Union. Something is wrong. Ah, whatever. It doesn't 
doesn't matter that much. What matters is that now we're gonna beat the Germans up. Let's leave the faction. I won't need to use all the 66. Also, you guys often don't like it, so let's just ignore it and move our guys to the German border. We don't need to station them here because if we don't call Russia in, the Germans won't be able to attack here. Oh, I seem to have lost one unit. Here, have reinforcements. I have a war goal on Italy. I'm not sure I can use it. Yes, I can. They still exist. But I will need a separate one on Germany. Oops, that's Poland. 20 days. Sure. I'll need to cancel military access, I guess. Or just get my troops out of their territory. Although I wish you guys could move a bit faster. You're all on strategic redeployment, which is good. Okay then, let's make sure to build some factories in Russia once we're done with our own. That'll make it easier and faster to annex them. Build up a network in Germany. Is Germany going to survive for long? I don't think so. I need to get involved in this war as quickly as I can. We need to get a chunk of Germany. Justification is complete, but our troops are still in their territory. Need to wait a bit longer. Oh, I'm bordering Italy down south. Didn't realize. Sending troops now. Just don't go through German territory. And we're out of German territory. When you're in position, we can attack, I think. Yes, yes, we can. I'm actually gonna start with Italy. Also, I do border Japan. No, Russia borders Japan. I don't need to call Russia in. Let's start with Italy. Declare war. Germany and Japan have been called in, so the war goal against uh, Germany was not necessary. Now I can get military access from the Allies. Maybe even join their faction. Once again, this might not be necessary, but it's good to have it. Most of the Allies are just not Poland, because if they give us military access, we will automatically take back their land. And we don't really want to do that. We want to take it for ourselves. Also, Japan's doing quite well. Not well enough to beat China. Right, military access thing requested. And I think I can justify a war goal on Saudi Arabia now. Lots of messages. And this army here can take care of them. Apparently, we need to declare a separate war on their puppet. That's better. We do have the upper hand. And the Allies are inviting us to their faction. But um, I don't think I want that. It will be problematic. Also, I hope there's no fighting against the Japanese. Really don't want to go there right now. From the guaranteed Saudi Arabia. Seriously, not stupid of them. I guess I'll have to cancel the war goal for now. Maybe not right now. I might be able to take the allies on. Probably won't want to, it's rarely worth it. You know what I should do? I should get my troops out of here, cancel my military access with France. Yes, let's do that and make sure of the Italians retake it, then I can take the territory back for myself. Cancel military access with France. Get you guys here. Might even let them get as far as here. How are we doing in Germany? Very well. Agent killed. Well, that was quick. Recruit in Germany. Restore the Vilayet of Danube and Moldavia. Moldova, sorry. More cores. Boom. See the manpower increase? Freaking France. Maybe I should join the allies. Will I be able to keep justifying if I do that? I'm not sure, but let's start some more justifications before we join the allies. But then again, if we join the allies, we will be giving Polish territory back to Poland. I didn't want to do that. On the other hand, we do care about uh, the Arab Peninsula more than we care about Poland. A difficult choice. Okay, I have an idea. Won't spoil it too quickly. Will auto expire on the 12th of September. Okay, I can sacrifice Poland. This bit here is worse. Problem is, if I join the allies, I won't be able to turn on them until Japan is defeated. Do I want to turn on them? I guess I don't have to. We can be the good Ottoman Empire and we can give up some land down south in exchange of all of Russia. I think it's a good deal. Sure. So what I'm gonna do is justify on Oman as well and accept the invitation to the Allies. Am I still justifying the war goals? I am. And the guarantee of France is worth nothing now. So I won't be able to get Saudi Arabia, Yemen and Oman thanks to this. But I still want the Italians to take over this territory. Maybe they will. Advanced rocket artillery complete. Call to arms from Denmark. Tibetan Empire. Magu, Japanese, Micronesia, Manchukuo, Japan. Japan. Am I not at war with Japan? I am at war with Japan. Strange. I mean, not Tibetan Empire, because they're already capitulated. That must be it. Yeah, sadly, we're giving this territory back to Poland, but um, we'll have a lot of territory on, of our own. And Netherlands capitulate again. I guess I have to just uh, live with the fact that I'm not gonna have Syria. Let's accept it and move on. How are you in Germany? Very well. New operative. Let's take the German. We do want to have a lot of spy network. Now, since we've joined the Allies, we can no longer do collaboration governments, which is crap. But it's not like we really need that. As logistics, I need more anti-air. Also, we're going to need to invade Japan, but I am going to inherit the Soviet fleet soon, which will be sufficient for that purpose. Although we haven't really done any fighting with Japan, so maybe this will conclude without Japan and the Peace Conference. Fall of Pearl Harbor? Really? What's my war score? 7% only? That's gotta be a joke. The Allies always have unrealistically high contribution in those calculations. Um, it's probably because of how Air Force is calculated. Or just Britain gets a bias, I'm not sure. One of those things. If I take Munich, is that gonna be enough to win? 
It might be. Oh, is that a capitulation? It might be because the game slowed down. Yes, yes it is. And we don't need to defeat Japan. And also, our war participation is so low that we didn't get anything. I do hate it, how it's calculated with the board participation of the Allies. They always get it inflated. I guess I get some Italian land, but not the land I want. I guess I'll take what I can get. Let's go from the south. Perhaps it's a bad thing that it ended so quickly without Japan getting involved in the final peace conference. There's gonna be some juicy border go though, so that's something. Is there anything else from Vichy France to be taken? No. We essentially did, well, maybe not most of the work, the, the Americans probably did most of the work, but we did a lot of work and didn't really get anything. Can I quit the faction now? No, we need to defeat Japan first, right? Yeah, we need to defeat Japan for this to happen. I mean, no, not like it's really a problem. We did get a lot of territory overall, just not with this. Now, it's possible that some of them will not be members of the Allies, some of the new territories. We should check that out. For example, Yugoslavia, not a member of the Allies. If I was not in the Allies, I could attack them. Same goes for them. What a waste of time this war was for me. Let's start invasion preparations. That should be enough. Two armies and the rest will secure on the borders here. Oh, I do have a border with Japan. I forgot I took this directly. Well, it's a small mistake we're paying for. Let's get a navy over there. Well, at least we got some territory. Not really proportional to how much we did in the war. But it always goes like this with the Allies. They always take too much for themselves. Oh, interesting. Nationalist Spain has joined. I could get some more war score by beating up Spain. But we're also about to be able to attack Saudi Arabia. Let's make sure to leave an army here. And you guys can go to Spain, help out a bit. We will need a lot more manpower to kill the Allies, if we'll even do it. Gabon capitulates. Japan has done quite well down here. Still wasn't able to defeat China. It would be good for us if Japan defeated China before we defeated Japan. But sadly, that will probably not happen. Justification on Saudi Arabia complete. Declare. France guarantees them, uh, but it doesn't matter, because we are allied. And they join the Japanese alliance, which is fine. I'm gonna kill them regardless. What if I leave Spain alone and don't help here? Maybe they'll kill France. No, I need them to be defeated for the war to end. It's already 1943 and I don't like playing that far into the game because it slows down a lot. I probably should have called Russia into the war with the Germans. Then this might have gone to them as their core territory. Oh well, too late now. Can you just use the strategic redeployment thing? Need to send some land lease to Russia. You can have my convoys and cars and guns and support equipment, everything. I also need to steal Russian manpower. We only have two million, but it's significant for me. So let's create a colonial template. Just copy this one and this one. I suppose I can use the garbage unit I've created to train a lot of them quickly. And once we next rush out their fleet will be enough to uh, defeat the Japanese fleet here and land in their territory. I shouldn't be getting involved in Spain, but I don't want this war to drag on forever. Oh, we can do republicanism again. How? Is that because I'm in the Allies? Well, sure. Kick from faction, seriously. Can France come to their help if we're fighting in a war together? I think they can. I'm going to cancel on Yemen and Oman for now. And I'm gonna need that military access back. And you guys, go home. Republican Italy. Ask for military access. Access. I'm going to create a new template, just a tiny, no, not infantry, tiny cavalry template. We can create camels, but they're slower than cavalry and they take more equipment. The only advantage they have is they get a bonus in the desert, so no thank you. Just regular cavalry, please. Ottoman delivery service, ODS, complete. We're going to need to make a lot of these. I should probably be doing them rather than that artillery thing. A lot, please. Okay, got military access from Italy, France, German Republic, I should probably do that too. Oh yeah, they're doing improved national spirit, which is great they're in the same faction as Britain. We've taken Saudi Arabia, that's something. That's a lower Russian independence. It's a pity that Japan didn't manage to kill China yet. We're still very far from capitulation. Also, I'm not really using the spies. Let's uh, exchange this guy for a captain of industry. Although I could become spy master of the Allies. I mean, if I was still in the faction with them. I'm researching random stuff because I don't really have anything good to research anymore. Damn it! Once again, <laughs> I forgot to gather a political part in Nex. I always do this. Well, we're getting 2.6 a day, so it's not that bad. Let's get our navy. Maybe the Russian Navy will help us here. Do we have naval superiority? No, not really. Oh, we do. So I didn't even need to call Russia in. I will, just so we can have some more war score. Well, the troops are underway. That's all that matters. Go kill Japan for me. We've landed. Go take over everything and quickly, please. You take Hiroshima and then also take over everything. Run. Austria votes to join Germany once again. Yeah, the entire war against Germany was a bust. At least I got military access from it. Move a little faster, please. Our participation is once again very small. I wish China would get defeated. It looks like the Japanese don't really have troops here. I mean, they rarely defend it well, but they usually at least try. Tokyo is about to be mine, and that's gonna be it for the war in a moment. I only have an 8%, but well, I guess it's justified they haven't spent a lot of time doing anything here. Well, China's been fighting them for years. One could argue that I'm the one who actually wins the war, but I guess it's less important. This war should be ending uh, very soon. Yep, 95% towards capitulation. And there we go. Once again, I don't have much war score. Can I pop at Japan? I can. I take Saudi Arabia. Not in one move. Right, so what we're gonna do is pop at Japan. We 
weird. Wait a minute. Weird. Something's wrong with the score calculation. I can't take 65 score here, but I can pop at Japan for 121, which is strange. I guess puppeting Japan is worth more. Or I could puppet Japan with just some cheap territory. Take all states, untake the cheapest one, puppet, untake the others. Can I also puppet Spain? That would be nice. Take all states, untake the cheapest one they have, puppet, untake the others. That's how we get a lot of stuff in this game. What else? Manchuka, do we care? Not really. I don't want another puppet. Let's take some Saudi states as much as we can. And end turn. Okay, now, suppose I can pass a few times, take the remaining Saudi states, and start feeding puppets. Give Japanese stuff to Japan, to turn. All right, I'm gonna need to pass a few times again. Pass, 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 pass. Japan gets all the Japanese states. Now time for Spain. As much as I can afford. And turn. Pass, 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 pass. Give Spain Spanish territory. And done. Didn't get that much, but we got more than in our war against Germany, and we contributed much more in the war against Germany, I think. So we did well enough. Spain is our puppet, and owns quite a lot of territory. Japan is our puppet, and it also owns quite a lot of territory. China? I suppose I could fight China. Let's annex Russia and then recap a bit. We send them enough stuff to annex them, we just need more political power. We could also annex Japan and Spain, but it won't be necessary. I think I'm going to end this soon because it's already 1944. We could take out all the allies too, I suppose, um, but it would take a long time, and I would need to use all the 66, which some of you like and some of you don't. Also, yes, it still works. China annexed Tibet. China is looking very long. Let's have a look at the factions map mode. I got kicked out of the allies. Shame, really. I would be close to taking them over once I annex Russia. It might be why they kicked me out. Afraid of my power. I own, well, this, of course, and Russia, and Japan, and Spain. The allies are bigger, and they are stronger. I could defeat them, but it would be... Hmm. Some of you would consider it cheating. Anyway, let's make sure to drain Russian manpower before we annex them. They have 3,029,000. So, can we deploy these guys yet? I probably won't need to. We have a lot of troops. Some cavalry and some artillery units. Also expeditionary forces, which we're going to disband. These guys will switch into a Russian template. And that should drain their manpower. Okay, now we can annex. It's calculating. There we go. Let's have a look. The Ottoman Empire is a bit bigger. But it didn't give me access to any of these decisions because I expanded the wrong way. I should be expanding here. Now, these guys go back to being cavalry. Manpower goes back to the pool. So let's pause and see the factories. Yep, all good. This video is already very, very long and it is 1944 already, which means the game runs slowly. So I'm not going to continue this because just finishing this game would take me as much time as creating a whole new video. And I'm pretty sure you would enjoy that more. So I'm gonna just tell you how, if you want to continue this, how from this point um, you should be the allies if you want to. Your biggest ally will be the Order 66, of course. You station your troops all over France and Germany and the United Kingdom and the United States and all the other allies, you know, just uh, this weak cavalry unit on garrison orders on aggressive. We got military access from them already, so we can do it. We just need to, you know, select territory, do a garrison order, and they will start moving. Of course, you need to give them generals and field marshals and distribute them properly. Then you take your strong units and position them at your borders so that, you know, they don't invade you. Also, some not too strong units at ports. We only have 3 million manpower. That's not that much to realize this plan. So we could, in the meantime, go after China and take them out and steal their manpower. That is something we can do. Um, they cannot send against us and their alliance is weak and the allies will not meddle. So that would probably be good. We should probably do China first. Then, you know, we station our troops, the weak troops, all across the allies. Then we station some strong troops in the United States because they're very powerful and in Britain because they're difficult to reach. Well, the United States are also difficult to reach. Then we station powerful troops on all our borders and then we just justify on someone they would guarantee like Yemen. Declare war, activate orders and the allied world falls. But the Ottoman focus tree is so slow that we couldn't really do anything for the first two, three years, which is why we've achieved what we've achieved in 1944, which is pretty late. And yes, you can keep playing after this, but just look at the game speed, and this is without any wars going on. Provisional government of Russia, do we want that? I guess we can. Oh, now the collaboration took effect. I guess that would be a good idea, because that would give us even more manpower. However, it would also make the map look less Ottoman, so it's not really an option. I mean, it will still be green, just uh, wouldn't have the name Ottoman Empire. Also, the research is pretty much done. There's nothing more to research for me. It wouldn't be that interesting to keep playing past this point. So I'm going to end it here. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know how you enjoyed this and if you would like me to try doing Turan as well. However, keep in mind that this tree is very slow and I could probably do two other videos in the time it takes me to do one turkey video. That is it then. We bid Sultana goodbye and remember this video had a sponsor. Do check them out please and I'll see you again soon.